when you were ordained as as uh, as a priest, there were still relatively there there were very few women who were priests compared to the number today. Uh, they were, there were still uh, um, I relatively few, but. Uh, uh, there were, there were. I'm, I'm try, I cannot remember figures, but the church did vote in 1976 uh, to regularly ordain women as priests, and so we had a number of deacons waiting in the wings. And so, uh, as of January 1977, uh, many women began to to be ordained priests. So I. I joined a sizable number, but in uh, comparison to the number of male priests, there the women were relatively few. And in terms of African American women, I was the third African American woman to be ordained a priest. Pauline Murray was, of course, first, and um, then uh, Mary Adebonajo, and I think I was third. Was there a sense in those early days of a kind of special sisterhood amongst the women who were who had become who had been ordained or, or no? Yes, there was because the, the the earliest women ordained had a very rough time, and um, the it, it's it's much much easier for women. Who are being ordained today, and they don't know um, what some women went through uh, in terms of their uh, uh, ordination and, and call to ministry, and and their being able to function in in parishes and whatnot. What um, was it like for some of those women? They could only, many of them could only be assistants in churches or those that got their own churches. Many got small churches that really couldn't afford them. Um, uh, for the first 11 women and then the five who followed them irregularly in Washington, D.C., uh, <clears throat> their... Um, they couldn't find places to celebrate uh, communion. Uh, relatively few places, and the, the, the priests that did allow them to do this uh, were disciplined sometimes by their own bishops. Uh, so, those early days were very difficult uh, for women. Um, and as I say, the, the the women coming along today um, go through the process um, like like men with little or no um, difficulty. Their their greatest burden is financial as they prepare for ordained ministry. There are still three dioceses in the Episcopal Church that do not ordain women. Uh, uh, the, the Diocese of Quincy in Illinois, the Diocese of Fort Worth, and the Diocese of San Joaquin in California. How is the church structured so that it is possible to have that kind of difference? Well, ultimately, the decision of whether a person will or will not be ordained resides with that person's bishop. And although we have canons or church laws that say that the ordination process is uh, open equally to men and women, um, and that and people want those canons um, to be 
enforced uniformly, the ultimate decision still resides with the bishop. So, obviously, the church as a whole has, as far as the acceptance of women equally in, in these roles, has not gone as far as you would like it to go. No, I would like women in who feel uh, uh, and who have uh, a call to ministry uh, that is discerned uh, by, their, by them and their community uh, to be able to participate openly in the ordination process and not have to uh, go some crazy backdoor route that um, uh, one bishop has has worked out that uh, women in his diocese can go to another diocese and be ordained, but they can't serve in that diocese, you know, mm -hmm. where they come from. So I think that's uh, uh, I think that's crazy, but, so, but on the other hand, I wouldn't want to serve in his diocese. 